Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, guys. I'm Pat. Welcome back to day two of our article about the Discovery Show codes and conspiracies. Right, that's the subject of our lesson for today. It's actually a television program on the Discovery Channel, and the title of that program is indeed "Codes and Conspiracies." Uh, codes, of course,、uh, are talking about、uh, special kinds of information and conspiracies. Well, that's when the government is doing something, but they're not telling us. Like nine、uh, eleven was a conspiracy. Some people believe that, or the moon landing was a conspiracy, etc. And last time we talked about Las Vegas and card count. So they're kind of using codes there, aren't they? Yeah, and some conspiracies. It's kind of what happens behind the scenes, what the casinos do about it. We've got a couple of new conspiracies to talk about today. They are definitely conspiracies. One is about the、uh, the Nazi sympathizers in the U.S. And then there's another article mentioned, or、uh, another discovery show mentioned in the article about an alien theory and what aliens do on our planet. So let's have a read through the article and find. Find out all about it. When you hear the word Nazi, you probably think of Germany and World War II. However, the U.S. has its own dark Nazi past. On February twentieth, nineteen thirty-nine, the German-American Bund held a rally at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Approximately twenty thousand Nazi sympathizers were in attendance. The Bund, a political party led by Fritz Kuhn, garnered considerable support despite its short-lived existence. Kuhn was arrested and later deported for embezzlement, and the party then struggled under ineffective leadership. American Nazis weren't limited to New York, however. In California, a Hollywood screenwriter named William Pelly christened himself the American Hitler. Two of his followers, Winona and Norman Stevens, purchased 55 acres of land in the Hollywood Hills. They began building a camp that, if it had ever been completed, would have housed several thousand Nazis and been self-sufficient for long periods of war. The camp is now abandoned, covered in graffiti, and the subject of nothing but rumor. Perhaps a lighter topic, but no less ridiculous, is the ancient astronaut conspiracy theory. The theory, spearheaded by Eric von Däniken, claims that aliens visited the ancient people of Earth, giving them the technology to build the Egyptian pyramids and other famous monuments. To von Däniken, the theory justifies unexplained phenomena, such as the Nazca lines in Peru. It even goes so far as to say that aliens may have been the models for gods that many of the world's religious texts are based upon. To find out more about these ancient aliens, American Nazis, and juicy Las Vegas secrets, tune in to Discovery Channel's Codes and Conspiracies this February. Hi guys! So that is our article. We're on to our second conspiracy here, the second of the Discovery Show Codes and Conspiracies episodes. Starts by saying, when you hear the word Nazi, you probably think of Germany and World War Two, which, of course, yes, Nazis. They were the big thing in、uh, the power that ruled Germany up to and during the war. So when you think of the Nazis, you kind of think of that era of history, that country, and so on. Right, and of course you think of their symbol, the swastika, and, and Hitler, and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. And I guess for people here in Taiwan, maybe World War II means more about the war on Japan, but、mm -hmm. of course it was kind of a, a war fought on two fronts. But in any case, however, you might be surprised by this, but the U.S., the United States, has its own dark Nazi past. Of course, the Americans were fighting against the Germans and against the Japanese. So, gee, how could the Americans actually support the Nazis? That seems kind of ridiculous, but actually. Actually, we're going to find out here. There were quite a few Nazis inside the United States. It does go on to say here on February twentieth, nineteen thirty-nine, the German-American Bund held a rally at Madison Square Garden in New York City. So this happened way back in nineteen thirty-nine. I think that's the year the fireworks started for World War Two. That's II, right? right. Yeah, it officially kind of kicked off later that year. 
Yeah, when、uh, Germany invaded Poland, that、mm-hmm. was the last straw, and everybody declared war on Germany. So this is at about that time. We have a party here called the German American Bund.、Uh, Bund here does refer to some kind of political association, but usually it only refers to this one,、uh, this pro-Nazi German American organization or party、uh, that existed in the 1930s. And they held a rally in Madison Square Garden, which is a big kind of public place in New York City. And a rally is where a whole group of people get together. They decide what they're going to do. They chant. They cheer. They make speeches. Kind of really get everybody really fired up and enthused about doing something. Could be something political. Could be something else. Usually, we talk about political rallies. Uh, but that's how what's what a rally is really just getting everybody together and getting everybody in a good mood. And approximately twenty thousand Nazi sympathisers were in attendance. Approximately means roughly. We haven't got the exact number, but it was about twenty thousand somewhere in that region. A sympathizer, meanwhile, is somebody who kind of sympathizes, believes in a cause, agrees with what those people are doing. So these were Americans who were thinking, you know, the Nazis are right; they've got it worked out. We actually support them. We are in favor of what they're doing, or just we think we're in favor of some of their political ideas. Maybe not all of them, but we definitely support them, and we wish we were on their side. And they were there in Madison Square Garden. In attendance. If you're in attendance somewhere, you are at that place. So we could talk about your attendance in class. Were you in class or not? Here we're talking about being at an event. Right. This、uh, does not sound surprising because at the time there were quite a few German Americans living in New York and in the United States. So you would expect a certain number of them to actually、uh, sympathize with the Nazis. So it's not surprising that twenty thousand of them gathered together for a rally at Madison Square Garden in NYC. Now this again is the Bund we're talking about. This particular political party. It's a political party led by. Fritz Kuhn, or at least it was, it garnered considerable support despite its short-lived existence. Now, in this、uh, sentence, we have the word "garner," which is a verb that just means it was able to gather this support, it was able to obtain it or get it. Yep, and the word "considerable" means quite a lot of. It was pretty impressive. They got a lot of support, maybe a lot of financial donations. A lot of people turned up. It was quite considerable. It was worth considering,、uh, despite the fact it had a short-lived existence. So this means the party didn't last for very long,、uh, and it wasn't around for very long at all. It just kind of closed down. I assume the government kind of moved them on and arrested people, as we'll find out, in fact. But the Word existence means how long something exists. It's its state of being from the start to the finish. So we could talk about whether you believe in the existence of ghosts, or we could talk about how long a company has been around and doing business. How long has this company been in existence? Yeah. For example, last year I wanted to buy the latest Triumph sports car, but somebody told me, "I'm sorry, Tom, but、uh, that company is no longer in existence. They are no longer doing business. They're." Probably bought out by somebody years ago, but in any case, here, yes, this party had a short-lived existence, maybe even less than a year or a couple of years. Who knows? Because once the war started, nobody wanted to hear someone saying "Heil Hitler" on American soil. That would have been really, really low class. Now, Kuhn was arrested and later deported for embezzlement, and the party then struggled under ineffective leadership. So here, the leader again was Fritz Kuhn. And he was arrested, which means the police came and got him. They put the handcuffs on him and threw him in jail on some kind of charge. And he was later deported. If you're deported, that means you're kicked out of the country. I'm assuming they deported him to Germany, but they may have sent him someplace else. Maybe they sent him to Taiwan to be a German teacher or something like that. Yeah, you're normally deported. That means to be sent back to your own country.、Uh, sometimes in the older days, it could mean sent off to a Prison colony somewhere, so we can guess Kuhn was German, possibly Austrian, and he was sent home for embezzlement. Embezzlement is when you use official funds and kind of take them for yourself. So 
you're in charge of a party's funds or a business's funds, but instead of only spending it on that political party or business, you kind of use it for yourself, buy things for yourself, put it in your own bank accounts, and that's illegal. So they arrested him, they charged him for doing that, and they kicked him out of the country. And after that, the Bund couldn't get any good leaders. They were ineffective. They were useless, and the party struggled and couldn't continue. Right, they probably、uh, couldn't find somebody as charismatic as Fritz Kuhn. He was probably really,、uh, you know, a good speaker, probably like Hitler himself. And after that, they just、uh, couldn't find a good leader. They were all incompetent, and the party probably、uh, broke up later on after that. Now, again, we're talking about this rally in New York City, and the next sentence goes on to say, "American Nazis weren't limited to New York, however. Okay, they weren't just." In New York City, they were in other parts of the United States.、Uh, in California, for example, we have a Hollywood screenwriter named William Pelly. I hope I said that right. He christened himself the American Hitler. So he was a screenwriter. That's somebody who writes a screenplay, which is basically the script for a movie. Yep. And he christened himself, which means he called himself or he gave himself the name of the American Hitler. They had the real Hitler in Germany. He's the American version. He has that. He had the same kind of power, beliefs, and so on. He was the equivalent. And two of his followers, who were called Winona and Norman Stevens. They purchased 55 acres of land in the Hollywood Hills. To purchase just means to buy something, so they bought 55 acres of land in the Hollywood Hills, which is this hilly area, high ground up and around by Hollywood. What on earth are they going to do with that? We're going to find out in just a few moments, because right now we're going to hand over to our Chinese teacher. 大家好，欢迎收听 English Digest， 我是 Sunny。承接昨天的课程，我们今天要来继续看 Unit Eleven Discovery 单元第二天的文章。文章第一段又举了一个揭露历史真相的例子，说明讲到纳粹时，很多人会以为纳粹活动只发生在德国，毕竟当时美国和德国是对立的。但事实上，美国也有很多纳粹分子在积极活动着，甚至有一个政党叫做 The German American Bund。德意美国人同盟这个政党还曾经在纽约举办了一个大约两万多人的集会。我们看到这一段的第五句 ：The Bund, a political party led by Fritz Kuhn, garnered considerable support despite its short-lived existence. 这个同盟是由弗里兹·库恩所领导的政党，尽管只短暂存在，却获得相当多的支持。来看一下 “despite” 这个字。它是个介系词，有尽管、虽然的意思，用来表达在语义上对主要子句的让步。后面只能接名词或 v i n g， 不可以接一个完整的句子。相当于 in spite of， spite， s p i t e， regardless of， regardless， r e g a r d l e s s， despite the heavy rain。My brother still went to the beach. 尽管下大雨，我哥哥还是去了海边。如果 despite 或 in spite of 后面要接一个完整句子的话，要在后面加上 the fact that， 再接一个完整句子。The fact 是名词 ，that 所引导的完整子句是名词子句，作为 the fact 的同位语。这时候 despite the fact that 就相当于 although。Though 或 even though 的用法，例如 ，in spite of the fact that， 或是 although it was raining， the kids kept playing outside。尽管正在下雨，这群小孩继续在外头玩耍。我们接着看到此句课文的下一句 ，Kuhn was arrested and later deported for embezzlement。库恩因为盗用公款而遭到逮捕，随后被驱逐出境。动词 arrest 是逮捕的意思，片语 arrest somebody for something 就是指因为某事而逮捕某人。例如 ，the police officer arrested the man for possessing illegal drugs。警官因为那名男子持有非法药物而逮捕他。arrest 也可以当名词，片语 put or place somebody under arrest。
就相当于 arrest somebody， 表示逮捕某人的意思。而 under arrest 则是指遭到逮捕。例如 ，The masked man was under arrest for robbing the bank。这名蒙面男子因为抢银行而遭到逮捕。接着，我们看到这一句的一个名词，这个名词我们常常在新闻报道中听到。那就是 embezzlement， 它的动词是 embezzle，e m b e z z l e， 意思是 to steal money from the place where you work， 也就是指盗用公款。例如 ，It is rumored that the CEO had embezzled millions of dollars from the company。谣传执行长从公司盗用好几百万元。We're going to take a short break now, and then we'll be right back to finish the lesson. Okay, let's continue talking about American Nazis. Uh, maybe you've seen the movie The Blues Brothers. There were Illinois Nazis in Chicago there, and the Blues Brothers、uh, ran them off the bridge and they jumped into the river below. But you'd have to see that movie to see that. But the point I'm trying to make here is that、uh, Nazis are still around. All over the place, and they were in the United States right when World War II started. So we talked about the Nazis in New York, and now we're talking about the Nazis in California, who were led by William Pelley. He christened himself, or he declared that he was the American Hitler, and two of his followers, Winona and Norman Stevens, purchased 55 acres of land in the Hollywood Hills. They bought it there, and they began building a camp. Okay, some kind of establishment in a wild area. That's what a camp is, and if it had been completed, it would have housed several thousand Nazis, and it would have been self-sufficient for long periods of war. So that was their plan to build this camp so that Nazis could live there and that they would be able to survive there during a long war. Maybe they had extra food and weapons and stuff like that. Yeah, here we use the word "house" as a verb rather than a noun. To house something means to provide homes, space, and so on for. So it, this camp would have housed several thousand Nazis. There was room for them, and it would have been self-sufficient. It would have been able to grow its own food, get its own water, not need any outside help for long periods. So they could have defended themselves from attackers, could have fed themselves for a long time. However, the article implies if it had ever been completed. Okay, so it wasn't completed. That's what we imply with this kind of conditional. This is a third conditional. We could say if it had been completed, it would have housed several thousand Nazis. We've sort of changed the structure of the conditional a bit, but it's still a third conditional. The camp, the article says, is now abandoned. It's empty. There's nobody there. Nobody uses it. It's also covered in graffiti. People have written and painted and sprayed stuff on walls and structures. Just covered it with kind of street art. And the camp itself is the subject of nothing but rumor. No one lives there. No one rules there. The only thing people do is kind of talk about what it was used for in the old days, or what might still be buried there, or who might live up there off in the dark, and just people telling strange rumors and stories about this place. But apart from that, it's nothing. Yeah, people may not even know what it is. Just a bunch of old buildings, dilapidated, abandoned buildings with graffiti painted all over them. Hey, I heard this used to be a Nazi camp. Really? You're pulling my leg. Don't joke with me. So that's what we're saying. It's kind of the subject of rumor,、uh, which of course refers to information that is not really based on facts. It could be true, but、uh, most of the time, rumors aren't true. Now, moving on to the next paragraph here, it says. Perhaps a lighter topic, but no less ridiculous, is the ancient astronaut conspiracy theory. We're saying that this is a lighter topic, maybe not as sinister or as dark as Nazis in the United States. This is the topic of the astronaut 
conspiracy. We're saying it is、uh, no less ridiculous than Nazis in the United States. Ridiculous here just means really silly, really hard to believe. In fact, it's so difficult to believe it's almost laughable. Yeah, it does kind of make you laugh. And this is this ancient astronaut conspiracy theory. So a conspiracy, remember, is like people planning and holding secrets and not letting the public know what's up. And this is about ancient astronauts. An astronaut, of course, is somebody who travels in space. They go up on rockets. They live on the International Space Station. They visit the moon and maybe. One day we'll walk on other planets and stuff. So we've got some astronauts now who have been to the moon, but not much further. But this theory is about ancient astronauts, thousands of years ago, space travelers who've been to Earth. Let's find out more about it. Yep, the theory says, or the theory has been spearheaded, or was spearheaded by Eric von Däniken. I hope I said that right. And this theory claims that aliens visited the ancient people of Earth, and those aliens gave the people of the ancient Earth technology to build things like the Egyptian pyramids and other famous monuments, maybe like、uh, the pyramids of the Mayans. Yeah, Stonehenge. Stonehenge in, in the UK.、Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, indeed.、Uh, they could have done that. Maybe that's what some people. Say, but、uh, this is a theory that this guy came up with. It was spearheaded by von Daniken, and here the verb to spearhead just means to be the leading、uh, thing or the idea that is first proposed or、uh, announced by a person. Yeah, it's like the point of a spear. It's the first thing that kind of appears and touches people. If you spearhead something, you lead it. And he thinks ancient aliens visited Earth. So aliens are people. From outer space, beyond the sun, beyond the stars, and they visited Earth thousands of years ago when people were just kind of living in caves and didn't really know how to use tools. But gave them the technology to build the pyramids and other things. Of course, the pyramids are amazing. We're not sure exactly a hundred percent how people did it. We don't know why Stonehenge was built, and these things look really difficult. So it's amazing to think of people building them thousands of years ago without. Electricity without diesel power, without anything. So his theory is that it was aliens. Aliens helped us do it, and they helped us build other famous monuments or famous places. You know, great standing stones and buildings and other things like that in the past. Indeed, a monument, of course, is some kind of structure that commemorates something famous or a person who is famous, like the Washington Monument, or I guess even the Sun Yat Sen Memorial Hall. Here is a monument. To the、uh, country's father, but in any case here, yeah. How could you build the pyramids or the Great Wall of China or Bora Budur in Indonesia? How could people have built those things? They were savages. They were not very smart. So they needed aliens to do that. That, of course, is the theory from this fella、uh, with a very German-sounding name. So to von Daniken, the theory justifies unexplained phenomena such as the Nazca lines in Peru.、Uh, to justify means. To provide some kind of explanation for something, to prove something is right, or to prove it is logical or reasonable. Yep, and the word phenomena is the plural of the word phenomenon, which is something that is strange but true. It's difficult to explain. It's not very common. It's quite rare, but people have seen it, and it is true. Things like solar eclipses are phenomena because they hardly ever come along, and when we see them, it's kind of amazing. But it's definitely true. And one example given is the Nazca lines in Peru. I've only got a vague idea of what these are, but I think it's a connection between. Buildings and foundation stones that kind of help to protect the place against earthquakes, or have a deeper meaning than just simple buildings、uh, that have been put there for people. Yeah, th- it could be referring to those lines that,、uh, if you see them from high up in the air, they actually look like figures or something. Oh, those! How could people on the ground have known that they were going to look like something from the air unless they were flying in a flying saucer or something like that? So, indeed,、uh, he says that this theory justifies、uh, these phenomena. Hey, here's my explanation. Aliens did it. Case closed. Okay. Now it even goes so far as to say that aliens. 
may have been the models for gods that many of the world's religious texts are based upon. So, if you think about religious books like the Bible or the Quran or the Bhagavad Gita in India and stuff like that, they all have these images of their various gods, like a Jesus or Mohammed. Well, there's no images of Muhammad, but nope. uh, maybe、uh, Shiva. You know, in Hinduism,、uh, they could have been just simply pictures of aliens. Yeah, that's the idea. They may the aliens may have then been worshipped by people who wrote books about them and kind of started these religions not on gods or ancient fathers, but on actual aliens. Now it's an interesting idea, and if you want to find out more about these ancient aliens or the American Nazis or juicy Las Vegas secrets we've already mentioned, tune into Discovery Channel's Codes and Conspiracies this February. We'll just explain the word juicy.、Uh, when talking about a fruit, it just means it's got a lot of juice. But when we're talking about juicy secrets or juicy gossip, we mean really good stuff, really interesting, something you can get your teeth into. And oh, don't you just love talking about that? Kind of gossip. Oh, that's such a good secret to know. That's really juicy. Yeah, I've got some juicy gossip about the boss、oh、and his、God. secretary. Tell、yeah. me, tell Did me. Did you、Tom. hear about them? <gasps> no.、Oh, yes, she was actually in his office clipping his fingernails、oh、the other day. Oh my goodness! My goodness! What a terrible thing to be doing during company hours. But in any case, yes, that could be an example of juicy gossip. And again, there could be secrets going on behind the doors of those casinos in Las Vegas. So if you want to find out what's going on there. Or with American Nazis, or with aliens. Hey, tune into this program this month in February. Hey, I'm going to tune in myself when I have the time. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for now. Here comes our alien Chinese teacher. 第一段的后半部分更进一步说明，纳粹活动不止发生在纽约，还发生在好莱坞山丘。我们看到这一段的倒数第二句 ，They began building a camp that, if it had ever been completed. Would have housed several thousand Nazis and been self-sufficient for long periods of war. They began to build a camp there. If it had ever been completed, the camp would have housed several thousand Nazis and been self-sufficient for long periods of war. They began to build a camp there. If it had ever been completed, the camp would have housed several thousand Nazis and been self-sufficient for long periods of war. They began to build a camp there. If it had ever been 因此也不能供给给数千名的纳粹党员居住。与过去事实相反的假设语气的句型是 if 加 s 加 had v p p s 加过去式助动词如 should would could might 再加上 have 加 v p p。例如 ，if I had had enough money back then, I could have bought that pair of stylish shoes. 如果我当时有足够的钱，我就会买那双时髦的鞋子。这句就表示我当时并没有足够的钱，所以不能买这双时髦的鞋子。文章的最后一段提到另一个历史上的阴谋事件，有一个人声称古代文明，甚至是各宗教的神明形象，都是由外星人所主导的。这个人试图用外星人理论来解释地球上一些不可思议的事件。但事实上，真的如他所说吗？我们看到最后一段的倒数第二句。He even goes so far as to say that aliens may have been the models for gods that many of the world's religious texts are based upon. 他甚至声称，外星人有可能是世界上各宗教典籍所依据的神的雏形。助动词可以用来表示推测的语气。如果助动词后面加的是原形动词。是用来推测现在可能发生的事情。如果助动词后面加的是 have v p p， 那就是用来推测过去可能发生的事。课文的例句是用来推测发生在过去的事，所以是用 may have been。例如 ，The lights are off in Mary's office. She may have left the office for lunch. 玛丽办公室的灯是关着的，她可能离开办公室去吃午餐了。以上为今天的课程讲解，谢谢大家收听。Okay, so that is the end of our article.、It、does sound a pretty interesting show. I do like watching these shows that kind of give you these strange truths and unusual things, or even just crazy alien theories. They're pretty fun. They certainly are. So this would certainly be a juicy program to watch. So don't miss it. And please join us again for another edition of our program when you have the time. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom, and I'm Pat. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye bye. Bye.